In 2015, the UK government authorised transfer of the first Syrian refugee families to the British Isles. Since then, Syrian families have been resettled in remote parts of the UK. This is the story of one of the first families to arrive. This is Jury's story. I love the smell of jasmines. All the houses in Syria have jasmine flowers around them, especially in Damascus. Jasmines grow everywhere, even now in the world. It's a beautiful white flower in the middle of all the destruction, the death, the fires. It's a stubborn flower. It grows even where barrel bombs fall. Like the people of Syria, it's a survivor. My name is Yuri and I am 30 years old. I'm from Damascus, Syria. I studied English literature at university and I had to escape from my country after the war started. I came to Butte Island six months ago. It was strange when we first came. But so many people here welcomed us when we arrived. Lucky for me and my husband, we both speak English, but it's hard for some of the other families who don't know the language. Sometimes I translate for them when they call me from the supermarket. I lived in an area uh, when the, the, the demonstrations started in it. Uh, the regime army and the regime forces started to bomb. So uh, we had to move from there to another area. You know, many horrible things happen from the beginning of the war. Arresting of young people with no reason, the uh, humiliation, the, uh, the bad things they are doing to the arrested people and the, the random killing. Maybe my brother is one of them. Uh, he is my only brother, he is my only friend. Uh, he's everything, you know, he used to do everything together. When my father asked them, why are you taking him with no charge, with no crime, with, no, with anything? They said, it's just a five minutes, we need to ask him some questions. And this was on, they will say the date, it's on the 21st of August 2013. And the five minutes are not finished yet, I think. And no one can, there is no lawyer, lawyer you can ask to defend him because you know, you don't know exactly where he is. 200 young men were taken with my brother at the same date, so. And all of them, by the way, the 200, they called their parents and gave them the same copy of the paper or the reason of death. And they told them to go to one certain hospital, which is under the control of the regime, of course. And you go there. And the doctors uh, there just say to you, he's dead, and this is the paper which proves that he is dead. And go, and that's it. There is no grave, there is no body, there is no photo, there is anything. And the same paper was distributed to 200 families. Do you have hope that he's still alive? Yes, he always comes to my dreams. I don't know, maybe. But I sometimes feel guilty to wish that he is alive because I'm sure that every second he wishes death to come. So I feel that maybe if he is dead, it will be better for him. But I hope he is alive and he will come and see my kids. Butte is a tiny Scottish island with a population of just 7,000 people. The arrival of 15 Syrian refugee families around Christmas 2015 was received with mixed reactions. David, a teacher, was one of the locals keen to meet his new neighbours. There have been generations of quote, visitors, refugees on these shores over the last well, ever since the recorded history, people have been coming here. Each of these individuals has a talent. I'm a positive person, and I think, think there is a multitude of uh, things to do, whether it be studying, occupations, for 
folk, if I was in their shoes, to rebuild their lives in, here in the United Kingdom, and in particular Scotland. Um, but again, Shamila, uh, there can be a lot of press and the negative. Yes. They love that, but there's a lot of good stuff going on here. As I met the t two lads on the bike, and I and I greeted them. I said, Salam alaikum. And they probably, what, what's this guy on about? You know, and they said, well, oh, that guy, you know, at least he gives me a smile. He says, hi. Um, you cannot engineer people's reactions. No. But my word to them, they're welcome in this home 24-7. You're going to be hassled, but you've got friends. As dark as the situation is, they get back home. But in the meantime, that I'm talking, the youngsters, they go back. Engineer, architect, plumber, like me, kitchen porter. I extend to them an invitation to come and see us here. Some of the locals were more wary of the new Syrian arrivals. Tommy and his wife Helen shared their thoughts about how native islanders were reacting to this unusual situation. I think it's fear. I think the first heard about them through hope gossip. Being an island community, which right? they were back in the fifties, nineteen fifties, the Royal Navy were based here. The town was busy and there was a navy and there were the locals and there was always a bit of them and us even then that I think as an island community we fear the big world outside to a certain extent. I've lived, I have lived in the island 72 years. I'm afraid I'm an old fashioned bugger but I've never heard of any of my local friends having anything whatsoever to do with the refugees. It's, I think there is very much of them and us and uh, none of us know what they've been through. All we hear, the majority of the press we get is bad press about the bombing here and bombing there and people are looking and wondering who's who. Uh, and I don't know if the refugees feel the same way about us who are sending bombs into their country. You know, it's a very, very, it comes very, very complicated. You've been living here for a few months now. <laughs> What are your feelings? What have the locals been like? Has the attitude changed or is it still the same? Uh, they are good people and they, they, most of them are kind hearted and welcoming. You know, we, we didn't get the chance to meet everyone, but the people we've met are very, very good. So we are trying to help them know us. We try to go to every occasion they have here. I mean, we've been to concerts, to plays in schools, uh, after all, I mean, if they don't want to know us and keep listening to rumors or to things they have in mind, we can't, we can't help it, we can't, we can't do anything to it. I mean, so many people are uh, affected by the media and the press. What would you say to people that want to meet you on the island? You are very welcome. Our house is open to you and you are happy to know you. I'd quite like, God willing, in two years' time, for you to come back and speak to me and see how, see how things are then. We've got our God, and you've got Muhammad, and uh, surely, surely somewhere, mankind will work out, or mankind can work out. The local populace are not accustomed. And that, that would soon be rectified with a little integration. Uh, on both sides, I suppose. 
with both Jury and David keen to meet, an afternoon tea was the perfect way for both families to connect. David and Marion, his wife, welcome the young family to their home. I want to see peace in my country. I miss my old home, my parents, the smells and sights of my city. One day peace will come and I'm waiting. I am a survivor. I am stubborn. My people like the jasmine flower. No one can make us disappear with bombs and guns. We will flourish as a light in the dark.